I'm Joan Rivers. Let's see who's coming out of my closet tonight. Hello? Hello. Wow. It's Sarah. Yeah. Woo. Come on over here, Sarah. <laughs> this is just great. I thought we were getting in here. No, well, you want to get in? Yeah. A, a I want the full mommy experience. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I want. I want to. I want to know what it's like. First of all, let me take off this beautiful jacket you sell on QVC. I found it. <laughs> I don't sell it on QVC. Jesus Christ! It, they're clean. They're clean. If I was a detective and I was like. Crumpled up tissue. Okay, we know the person's Jewish. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> mints. Loose mints. Hey, you look very, that was my jacket. Well worth it. Well worth it. In what decade? All right. Uh, I like to get under the covers because I like to sleep b uh, bottomless. It, oh, my God. That's my style. <laughs> this, is this is good. Are you comfortable? I make a good living. <laughs> <laughs> that's a classic. Is it still, because I don't know, because I'm such an icon now, but for the average working girl, right. comedian, right. is it still, as they say, harder to be a woman? You find it harder? Well, there's a war on women. There's that. And there's the whole, like, are women funny? Why is that even an issue anymore? Women run... Comedy. Right. You've seen comedy lately. It's all Tina Fey and Whitney Cummings and Joan Rivers and yeah, all those hacks. Me. That's enough. <laughs> 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 Do you find I found when I was still fertile that men did not like a funny woman in bed. Do you? Do they always say you're going to be funny in bed? Well, I mean, yeah, you don't want to use your, their penis as a tracheotomy <laughs> microphone thing, but um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, that's why I like funny guys. Don't uh, you feel like you, it's, this sounds so snobby or an, an elitist, but, like, it's hard to hang out with people who aren't comedians or writers or comedy writers or... Not one of my friends is not either a writer or a comedian or a funny funny person. Yeah, it's not Nobody's about being snobby. It's just like, I don't even know what to say to a regular person. So, I guess you never hang out with Jay Leno. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. It, you used to date Jimmy Kimmel. That's when I first met you. All right. All right, so, now that that's over, what other talk show host would you take? If you had to choose between these three, these three. Okay. Okay, Jimmy Fallon, Definitely. Montel Williams, Oprah. <laughs> uh, it would go Fallon, Winfrey, Williams. Yeah, Winfrey. I think I could Because I just like manliness. I like, like, <laughs> I like macho. I like people who are in control so that I don't feel so manly. Have, have you ever done her show? No. Me, but I met her once. You've never done it? I did it once, I think, uh, when Melissa got married. So it's 12 years ago. All right. Well, you know that she doesn't years. have a show anymore, does she? Well, obviously it didn't affect me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still counting. I haven't done it in 12 years. Well, yeah, but she hasn't had a show in three years. <laughs> but don't you remember who didn't use you? No. I don't, I'm asking. Oh, don't I remember who didn't use me? Who did you want to go on when you first started out and they didn't want you? The Donnie and Marie show when they had a talk show. I remember getting a letter that said, like, um... You know, thank you for your tape or whatever. Remember they had a show? I don't know why I wanted to be on the Donnie and Marie show. Um, Do you wear, like, magical underwear? I don't have... Uh, I should. Yeah, that's, they're just. What about comics stealing your jokes? Because you are so... And I'm not just ass-kissing you, even though this is the place to do it. But um, what about comics stealing your jokes? Do you find that I, there's certain people that just take jokes? I remember a comic who was, like, bigger than me at the time, like, asked to buy a joke from me, and I said no, and then he just took it and stole it, and then I caught him doing it. And I said something, and he just went, guilty, like that. And I was so angry, and I remember um, that's when I first, like, knew Gary Shandling, and I told him about it, and he was like, but you can keep writing jokes, and yeah. that guy can't write jokes. Can That's we get why the he name? Steal. No. Dane Cook. No, no. It's no. It isn't even someone who really 
Louis C.K. anymore. Yeah, it's Louis, Louis C.K. C.K. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? He has to steal. Wouldn't that be hilarious <laughs> if Louis C.K. just stole jokes? I know. And everyone thinks he's so brilliant. Meanwhile, he's doing your jokes. I know, I know that. Okay. Have you ever gotten in trouble with your jokes? For example, I was in London and I did a talk show. I think it's called The Women or The, the, the Talk. Or and I, they asked me what I thought of Russell Crowe. And I said, I get ready to bleep. He's a mean son of a bitch. And we went to commercial. And two security guards came onto the stage in the middle of the show with the audience, with the audience, and took me and escorted me out of the escorted me right off the BBC premises. Wow. What? Why? Yes, because I said, son of a bitch, and I've never been invited back on that show. But it made headlines, so it was good. My show was packed mm. from then on. <laughs> but have you ever had that? But they literally took me yeah. out of the building. Yeah, I had a, um, I remember I did, like, um, a show at the Nokia in New York, and it was, like, for an MTV crowd. And I, I had a whole bit about how... <laughs> Everyone thinks Martin Luther King is so great, but they don't. I don't even remember it, but it's like they don't know the bad things. He was he um, he was littered. He was you know like and it was obviously ridiculous. And it was a mostly black crowd, but it was teenagers. And when I was that age, I was very PC too. Like I didn't, I couldn't distinguish. And um, they booed me like off the stage. And then Eddie Griffin, who's a comedian, was like, you were great, I, you know, they didn't get it, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, that means so much to me, because he's like really huge comic, especially in the black community, and, uh, or African-American community. Black works. Black works, thank you. <laughs> we have a very talkative audience. Hey, do you know, um, what do they call, what do you call a black person who flies a plane? What? A pilot, you racist. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he defended me, was so great backstage, and then he went to do his set, and I go, you know what, I'm gonna go into the audience and watch him, and he completely sold me out on stage. It was like, oh, this Jewish girl can say stuff about us, but I'm a, and, and everyone was like, wah, and I was like, Oh my God, Eddie! <laughs> you know, like he was on my side and, and backstage, but it was hilarious. It's, what was the worst place you've ever played? Because we've all you came, or did you come up quickly? I don't know your background. Like I took seven years. I played every strip joint. I played every. T I played places they thought I was so not funny. I used to say to myself, "Pretend it's a lecture." You know, I mean, <laughs> so I'm not going to get upset because it's a lecture. Of course, I wouldn't laugh. Why should they laugh? It's a lecture. What? was your background? Did you come up slowly? Just oh, very slowly. I mean, I started when I was 17, and then after I, in Boston, and then after I graduated high school, moved to New York. And I was 18, you know, now I'm 42, so it's a, a very, you know, everybody, every time you hit a different mark, it, people think you're an overnight success. I mean, you're, they don't know it's been, you know, How 20 long years. before you could make a living only at this business? Actually, pretty early. Well, I got hired as a writer on Saturday Night Live when I was 21, 22. But that was just one season I got fired. So I made a living, and I lived off that a couple years. And um, then I didn't, I didn't even know if I was in show business for... Thank God I had stand-up. You know, it's like that's the constant in our lives. Like we can, as long as we can put a pen to paper, we can work, you know? What's your favorite joke at the moment? You know, like you have certain babies, you just, you go on stage, you know, I can't wait till I'm going to get to this section. I haven't <laughs> tried this yet, but um, I thought of, uh, like, with those care commercials with the starving kids. I have jokes about that, but I would, this is a new one. Um, you know, I see those ads with, like, a starving kid in Africa, you know, and I just, it, it makes me feel so terrible. I just have to remind myself, it's just an actor, it's just an actor. <laughs> I don't have this set up yet, but it's something like that. I have a very similar one where that terrible Sarah McLaughlin commercial with the dogs. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then I realized they were actors, so I said to my dog, Lulu, this is doggy lottery, and I beat the shit out of her. You have that and joke? I, That's the same joke. Same thing. Well, yeah, ah! but I, I, yeah, well, I, you probably took it from me. I didn't, but I have oh, to drop it. No, you don't. It's different because I take my dog and I beat the he shit out of her, and I, I, uh, and she, we would have gotten the commercial, 
Except that she died in the cab. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. <laughs> so oh, that's, that's such a better joke. That's no, hilarious. Not. But, it, but <laughs> everybody sees the same things. You know what I mean? Don't, which right, is right. why I don't see that many comedians because I don't want them. Because afterwards they'll say, "You took it from me." You it's know, when terrifying. you're sitting there in the it's audience, like you, you go. Uh-oh, that's very similar to what I'm saying. They're not going to believe that I've done it. It's such a scary, touchy thing, you know, because that people, I mean, someone told me that he met a, um, a, a movie writer, and you, you see comics jokes in movies all the time. It's like they don't know that it's, you can't just take comedians' jokes. And there's a screenplay writer who says, oh, yeah, I, I do my first draft, and then I turn on Comedy Central to punch it up. And it's just like... How do you not know that that's fucking stealing? Yes. But there's just no way to kind of, there's there's no way to really copy, I guess you can copyright your jokes, but what comic's gonna get their shit together to do that? And what judge is gonna say, well, I don't think that's, you know, you have to have like six in a row or something, because I tried. Really? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't. All right, what's off limits to you? Like, I just saw, and I always say, if I if I think to say it, then it's not off limits. I don't, I don't. Prejudge. Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I. The Connecticut shooting. I mean, if I thought of something funny enough that it was, it would make you laugh. I mean, I think what people and you start. We're talking about this before before we came onto your beautiful set. Thank you. Would you believe this used to be a bedroom? You're kidding. This was a bedroom. Yeah. This? Yeah. Wow. I know, I know. Miracle. <laughs> Miracle. I'm so glad I could go under the covers because I like to let my vagina breathe. My mother always told me that's then important. Your mother used the word? Yeah, she said, let your vagina breathe. Then you're not Jewish. I am Jewish. Then I, and I had to have a pet name. I'm like, I'm the different kind. I'm not your kind of Jewish. I'm the, like, New England sloppy stains on the shirt, pens in the pocket, you know, if you wear a yarmulke, it's like hanging by a thread <laughs> under a Red Sox hat. Jewish. I just went to my nephew's bar mitzvah. It was so, this is the kind of Jews we are. It was like the reception was one large pizza for each table. Oh, wow. <laughs> Plastic cups, no ice, and just big gallons of Fanta, like warm Fanta. And pretzels. This that is not a bar mitzvah. It was, but it was fun. It was good <laughs> dancing, but it was. But vaginas always had like pet names, right? Your poo poo or your Tweaky. VG. Your little VG. That's what they, my mother. I think See? it was the first time I'm remembering it since it, that time. VG. <laughs> what does that stand for? Oh, oh yeah, never but, mind. Vagina. Right. Okay, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Who was on when you when you wrote for it? Oh my God. Adam Sandler, Julia Sweeney, Mike Myers, Phil Hartman, Chris Farley, David Spade, Rob Schneider, Ellen Cleghorn. It's crazy. Melanie and, Hutzel. And was it very druggy? Because when I was there, it was very, it was a very happy group. You no, know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. It was happy and very unhappy, cause, you know, but very happy. You were there in like the cocaine days. Yes, I was there in the John Belushi days. You oh know? my God. It's, uh, it was very strange. No, no, I was the only drugs there. Only drugs? Yeah, like nobody did drugs. I smoked a little pot, but it was very, oh no, people drank. There was a certain hour during rewrites when Jim Downey, the head writer, would just order in margaritas. But I don't drink. I have a Jewish stomach. That's so, <laughs> which means? I get, get nauseous. <laughs> and I'd say nauseous. Like yeah, that. exactly. Get, <laughs> <laughs> very important. OK. If you could meet any I have to ask you all these questions, because I want, I want to know so much about you. Uh, if you could meet any comic in the past, dead now, who would you want to meet and talk to? Would you count Ruth Gordon as a comic? Yes. I would say Ruth Gordon. It's a dress. She was a writer. She wrote screenplays. She was, you know, a performer. So, I mean, I just, I very felt very driven. impacted by her. Do you know when she, she was, what is it, like 1912, 1914, she was born, and the skirts were long. And when the skirts got shorter and she was on the stage, she had bad legs, so she had both legs broken and reset so her legs would look good on stage. That's a driven woman. Oh my gosh, I that's the last thing I would have thought of her was like vain. Yeah. 
Yeah, broke both legs and had them reset. Mm -hmm. How about that? Oh my also gosh, met a doctor at the hospital at the time, so not so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was because I was I thought you were going to say Lenny Bruce. Or one of those, you know, one of that group. Or Lenny Mae Bruce, West. yeah, but I, I'm not good around. I mean, I know I say I do. I had to smoke pot or whatever, but I don't like druggy people. Other than that one thing, I do like pot, but I don't like like heroiny, cokey, druggy people. Now you're very. I mean, not that I don't. I think he was a genius. All those things, but I was, get was, personally sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> end up being really fucking depressing when they're doing a show in a room. Oh, God. Oh. This is not a room, Sarah. This is now a set. And I think that was very rude just now, what you said. Well, thank you for confronting me and being honest. I appreciate that, <laughs> but I'm just saying the truth. <laughs> One day when you're my age, if you live this long, you'll understand sometimes you have to make certain things happen. They don't come for you anymore. I was told that you died like 10 years ago and that you're totally <laughs> animatronic. Like, this isn't, like, I don't know who's working this, but it's amazing. I'm right up close. It looks real. It looks real. It's so nice. <laughs> I'm looking at you. See, I'm going to be. This is why. <laughs> this is why I could be the, the, the charming hostess. I'm up close with you, and you are so pretty. Oh shit! I was bracing myself yeah. for something. What is your best feature? What do you think is your best feature? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> um, I have a swan-like neck. My eyebrows are like, you know, I've got. These are highly coveted eyebrows. I have them insured for several. First, I have them waxed to define them as eyebrows <laughs> on my face. Um, God, I have so many great, I've got big, heavy Jewish boobs. Men Cubs, love that. Yeah. <laughs> the most racist man is gonna like a nice, heavy Jewish bosom. <laughs> There's a weight to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> have your have your have your looks or your breasts specifically, but have your looks helped you or hurt you in the business? Probably both. I mean, I you know it's like when you look great like, on stage. Oh, thank you. And you wear very first time I saw you wearing I think shorts, and you looked great. You just look great. The legs look great. Well, I wear like tights with my There's shorts. Tights. Yeah, okay. I do tights with shorts. I I would you know I've got I've got some oatmeal-y situations on my thighs, but you know what? I'm strong and my body works. That's what my mantra is whenever I complain. I look in the mirror naked and I go, ugh, and then I go, if this was somebody else's body, I'd be like, she looks great. She's got a beautiful, like, woman's body, you know? Like, so I'm trying to be as kind to myself. I mean, maybe at the detriment of my career, but. <laughs> <laughs> Are you depressed very often? Most comics are so depressed. I'm depressed seeing the set. I'm depressed <laughs> seeing my hero, where my hero is at. That's depressing. I'm, I'm no longer really like dreaming about a future. <laughs> if that, but yeah, I'm all right. I'm on, I'm on Zoloft, a very low but constant stream. What about your family? Last couple of questions, if I may. <laughs> family. <laughs> Anybody else funny? Because I think funny is DNA. Yeah, no, my whole family is funny. S yeah. Mother funny, father funny, brother, sister? My mother's funny in a very different way from my father, but she she is funny. She, like, doesn't swear or anything, but she'll just swear only gratuitous. I think both of my parents only swear gratuitously. Like... I've never heard her swear, and then one day she was trying to get the garage door to open. She's like, come on, you fucker, and I was like, what? My dad says fuck every other word, but it's always like with joy. Like, I'm such a fucking lucky daddy. You know, he'll like do errands all day with us and be thrilled. And what, is, what do the other sibling or siblings do? Three sisters. Um, Three? Yeah. A writer, a writer slash actress, and a rabbi. A Walk rab into a bar. No, yeah. <laughs> you don't know my oldest sister's a rabbi. No, uh, no. Yeah, so I get a free pass into heaven. So do you even go? Even though it doesn't exist. Oh, do Lord. you do you go to the service? 
do you sit if she's and, doing it and do you like make sure to make a laugh <laughs> she's really <laughs> funny she had a um she had a congregation once in uh in virginia and everyone was singing and she just started laughing like tears she couldn't control herself and slowly they stopped singing and they're just like looking at her like what and she goes I'm sorry you guys have are the worst singers I've ever heard like it was so and they were just like oh but it was uh well, I guess not that funny a story <laughs> <laughs> is she is she married yeah she's the only one who's married and the only one with kids she's and she's the one that had the bar mitzvah yeah her the son bar Adar. Mitzvah. So you would think she would I understand now why it was a lousy bar mitzvah not lousy careful bar mitzvah because she doesn't want to compete well, if you were a rabbi with a congregation and everybody's having these huge bar mitzvahs and then your son is going to have a bar mitzvah, you don't want to have to compete with the Schwartzes. You know what I'm No, saying? but it's, they're from a community in Massachusetts where it's like, you know, nobody has a lot. It's not a, you know, it's not like a wealthy. It's, it's a rich with, it's a very hippie, granola, don't need to shower every day. Kind right. of head, <laughs> big brain people. Right. I love that. Don't need to show. I may only be talking about Susie. Sorry, Susie. I'm also the, my sister. The rabbi is Susie. Rabbi Susie. Although her friends call her Susan. I'm gonna stop talking now. Okay. Last question. Last question. What in ten years from now? What would be your dream? Where do you want to be privately, and where do you want to be professionally? Mm. Um, well, it's so funny, like, I look around and all these people have, like, empires, like, comedy empires. I go, how the fuck do people do that? How do people make money? That's I why like I'm every doing my show... own show. I'm going to make a bundle on this, you can tell. You can feel it. Yeah. You can't feel it? No, <laughs> I, of course. I... But exa everybody has an empire, exactly right. I know. I don't understand it. You know, there's all these, like bros that watch each other's backs and make big movies and I how do you do even get the capital for that how do you make money I I have I mean listen I always say a little different from you keep your overhead low you know I own my car I've had for nine years I own my apartment but I still go oh man I gotta make some money I feel like every show I do and I'm happy to is a benefit or a fundraiser I'm not, like I don't have any income yeah this year. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I have nice things. So what do you want to have in 10 years? You want to have written your own movie? Um, gee, I'd love to have a uh, not-quite-queen-size bed like you. <laughs> <laughs> and privately, what would you like your, your, prof your professional life we've handled, your personal life? Where would you like to be in 10 years? I mean, I'd like to be in love and have that, you know, and have, um, and just like surrounded by friends and maybe like a, a kid, I think in 10 years maybe. Which would be nice. Yeah, I mean, obviously my womb is polluted, but I want to <laughs> adopt or something. <laughs> you just, I love you so much. Oh, just thank you. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you more. More. And I love you for watching and I can't wait for you to watch next week. I'm not gonna tell you who's in the closet, You'll have to see for yourself. Till then, good night. And thank you again for being with me and being in bed with Joan. <laughs> <laughs>